Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Mike, you're watching In The Mix, and today we're going to be doing an FL Studio Basics video all about Fruity Delay 2. Just one announcement very quickly is that the next video we're doing is going to have a really big giveaway and we're also going to be releasing a brand new track on that day, so don't forget to stay tuned for the next video too. I'm going to very quickly go over all the features of this plugin and then I'm also going to show you how we use it in our songs. I'd advise using headphones or good speakers when listening to this tutorial so that you can really hear all the stereo information of these delays. Just a little bit of background information, I've loaded up this sort of marimba and celeste sample played together and I've sent it to its own mixer track. You're gonna have to send your instrument or sample to its own track so that you can really have control over these delays. There's two things in this effects chain, one is a fruity send, just ignore that for now. I've got a little bit of reverb just so that this sound isn't as sharp and I'm just gonna load the fruity delay 2. So what fruity delay 2 is gonna do is it's gonna take the initial signal and it's just going to repeat it and how it repeats it is up to you and that's what these dials here control. So just first things first, if I just press a note, you can just hear that it's added delays in. So starting at the right here, you have this dry dial. Turning it all the way to the left gives us only the delayed signal. So turning it to the left gives us none of that dry signal. If I press a key, you can see that it takes time for the delay to kick in and you're getting none of that dry signal. If I turn it all the way over to the right, the dry signal is going to be exaggerated. Middle clicking a dial at any time will just return it to its default uh, position. So now looking over on this side, you have some options. So this is the signal input into this VST. So starting with volume, if no volume is fed into this VST, you can see that there's absolutely nothing happening with the delay. If I feed a lot of volume in, you can see that it's very sensitive and it uh, creates an awful lot of volume with the delays. Pan, so you have control over the left and the right of the signal here. If I pan it all the way over to the left, you'll hear that all the delays will be on the left hand side. All the way over to the right, clockwise, all the delays will be on the right hand side. So I hope that's making sense and should be quite simple. We have something to control the dry and wet signal. We have something to control the pan of the input and the volume of the input. Over here we have the time dial and this will, se and this will select how much time or the space in between each delayed signal. So for instance, if I set it small and if you read up here, you can see that it's one, very, very quick delay time. If I set it larger to eight, so I'll just set it back to three or four. And you can see that it's just delaying like that. Now the next most important thing is the feedback and this is gonna control the type of delay that happens. So in normal mode, whatever pan you set on the input will remain for the delay. So if I select an input pan of left on normal mode, the delays will pan over to the left. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it in the center and I'm gonna look at the volume and this cutoff frequency dial. So what these control is the volume controls how many times it delays. So I'm just gonna put it all the way down here and you will hear only one delay. That's it. If I turn it all the way to the other side, you will hear delays to infinity. That's not gonna stop. So I'm gonna stop it by pressing this button up here. So somewhere in the middle is usually good. A couple of delays and it starts trailing down. Now what you can also do to make these uh, fade away more smoothly is control this cutoff frequency. So if I, if I keep it open, you can hear that all the delays sound very similar to the original signal, but they just sound a little bit quieter. If I control the cutoff, they don't just sound quieter, but they also have less high-end frequency information in them. You can hear the cutoff fades them away as well. This filter sweeps them away along with a decrease in volume. It can make it sound really natural. So that's normal mode, and that makes sense. Invert just takes the pan of the input and inverts it. So if I pan all the way to the left, the delays will be heard on the right. Just like that. Ping pong mode is what we use most commonly. Uh, and this can really give a really cool spatial effect. So if you set it onto ping pong mode and then change the pan, maybe set it all the way over to the left, this will put one of the delays to the left and then the next one to the right, the next one to the left, the next one to the right, and continue doing that. 
just like that. And I'm going to exaggerate this. You can really hear that difference, it makes the sound incredibly wide. So now if I turn it back onto normal mode, the only dial that I haven't covered yet is this offset. So what this will do is this will take a standard delay and it will delay the left and right channels slightly to make it seem a little bit wider. So I'm going to exaggerate this and I'm going to turn the dry all the way down so that you can just hear the delays. In the middle, the delays all feel like they move away in the center. If I just add a little bit of this, And this utilizes an effect known as a Hass effect where you delay two signals in the left and right slightly so that one plays slightly after and then you kind of hear this difference in width and maybe difference in direction as well. You need to be careful with this. Sometimes if you do this and then you uh, collapse the signal back into mono, it can sometimes sound a little bit odd. For now, you don't really need to worry about this time offset. So I've just gone over the basic features of this but I'm gonna show you a way to use it that's a little bit easier than putting it in series like this. So I've got everything on the same channel in the same effects chain. So all I'm gonna do is simply remove it from the channel that it's on, and this is where this fruity send comes in. So I've got another channel here called delay that's empty, and I'm gonna click down here and go side chain to this track, and then I'm gonna open up fruity send, and I'm gonna send it to the track that I've called delay. So now all of this signal is sent to this delayed channel. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a delay 2 on the delay channel and I'm going to turn the dry all the way down so that we just have the delayed signal. You can hear it like this. We're only getting the delays there. And I'm going to just, I'm going to set it onto ping pong mode, I'm going to change the input pan a little bit so we get that stereo feel. So now what this lets you do is control the dry signal and the delay separately. So perhaps you wanted to put an awful lot of reverb on the delayed signal, but wanted to keep the dry signal as it is. So I can keep the dry signal sounding like this, just a little bit of reverb, but I can still put a lot of reverb on the delays. You hear that? The reverb's just on the delays. Furthermore, you could take these delayed signals, run them through an EQ, and you could just sort of gently shape the sound a little bit, try to color it a little bit, so that the delayed signal sounds considerably different to the input. You could also run it through saturation and such, just to make it sound really different. And then what you can do is you can have a dry signal, and you can start fading in the delay, and just get just a perfect amount of delay. You can change the time, of course. And then you can just fade it in. Another great feature of using this second delay channel is that if you wanted to say distort the original signal, I'm just gonna add Head Crusher, and I'm just gonna, this is a great free saturation plugin. I can distort the original signal, but you can hear that the delays don't have any of that distortion on them. And it's just little artistic effects like that that can really give some space and width to a mix without uh, just overloading it. You might want to keep the original signal clean and distort the delays instead, in which case it could sound a bit like this. Maybe a little bit crazy, but it's something you can do. I always like putting a delay on a separate channel just because it gives you lots of control. You can just take this fader down during a chorus and then there's not gonna be any delay. And if you want a lot of delay, you can take it up. If for some reason you only want delay, you can just turn this original channel down and just have your delays. And I just find that it's a really good way to do it. That's what Brad and I tend to do. One last feature that I forgot to show you was that this fruity delay on the time dial, if you look up into the top uh, left-hand corner of the screen, you can see that it gives you these numbers. And if it, you land on a whole number, it's a perfect tempo synced delay to your track. You can also right click press set and select how many steps you want the delays to be separated by and it sort of jumps it on to the nearest step. So I hope this video has helped you learn how to use Fruity Delay 2. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to stay tuned for our next video which is going to be a huge giveaway. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.